Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. In this video I shall be discussing with you neonatosepsis, a quite important uh, topic from the department of NICU. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe because I plan to make a series of um, topics, high yield topic tutorials on high yield top uh, high yield topics that um, can help you prepare for your board exam. All right, so let's begin this tutorial by defining neonatal sepsis. So neonatal sepsis is a clinical syndrome that is characterized by signs and symptoms of infection with or without accompanying bacteremia in the first month of life. And this definition is provided to us by the Journal of Clinical Neonatology. So neonatal sepsis encompasses various systemic infections of the newborn such as septicemia, meningitis, pneumonia, arthritis, osteomyelitis, as well as urinary tract infections. Now, neonatal sepsis can present itself in two forms, as early onset and late onset. Now, with early onset, some literature will tell you that it occurs, um, rather, it presents within the 48 hours of delivery, and other literature will also say 72 hours. It depends on which literature you're using. But early onset usually is the one that has a fulminant course and it has a f 5 to 50% mortality rate. Whereas late onset, um, again, certain literature will say it presents after 48 hours of delivery, and other literature will say 72 hours um, uh, post delivery. Um, what you need to understand about late onset is that this one has a slower progression and is usually associated with meningitis and it has a 3 to 6% mortality rate. Now let's discuss the predisposing factors beginning with maternal factors which are, I'll list them quickly because uh, they're quite easy to understand. So, prolonged rupture of membranes, premature rupture of membranes, um, preterm labor, a fever of greater than 37.9 degrees during the time of labor, history of previous neonatal sepsis baby, clinical evidence of chorionitis, UTI in the mother at delivery, multiple gestation, for example, in tween pregnancy, as well as diabetes. Now for fetal factors, um, these ones are also quite straightforward and easy to understand. So that's fetal prematurity, meconium aspiration, low APGA score, as well as male gender. Now for signs and symptoms, um, the neonate will have signs like grunting, an increased respiratory rate of uh, more than 60 breaths per minute there will be nasal flaring and chest recessions and these basically are signs of respiratory distress um, that you may you may want to look out for in this neonate also you may um, notice that there is a fever of more than 37.9 degrees celsius and in other cases it may even occur it may even present itself as hypothermia of less than 35.5 degrees Celsius. Um, child will have poor feeding, abdo distension, diarrhea, under gastrointestinal manifestations. And if you continue to list the signs and symptoms that may be seen um, under neurological manifestations, uh, neonate will be lethargic, it will be irritable, and uh, in state of hypotonia, seizures may occur. Um, of course, you may notice the bulging fontanelle, and uh, there may also be apnea. When it comes to investigations, top of the list is history. We need to collect a comprehensive history on maternal condition and delivery history. And secondly is the physical exam. We need to examine the infant and check for all of the symptoms if they're present or not. And thirdly, a septic screen is very important. Here we check for full blood count, and uh, this involves total white blood cell count and differentials, ESR and platelet counts. And we also need to do a blood culture in order to check for, um, well, microscopy and uh, sensitive, culture sensitivity. And we also need to do a lumbar puncture. 
here we're checking for protein and glucose levels and then we also need to do a microscopy and sensitivity test urinalysis as well for microscopy and um, sensitivity test and a chest x-ray is also very important to rule out pneumonia Right now that we've conducted our investigations, we need to look out for certain markers or rather indicators and that's uh, leukopenia of less than 5,000 millimeters cubed, ESR of more than 15 millimeters cubed and increased white cell count of more than 20 cells per millimeters cubed in the CSF and also in the CSF we need to look out for an increase in the protein levels. Now bear in mind that in term newborns um, protein levels may be high, so our indicator here is if the CSF protein level is more than 1.2 grams per liter, we have to be alarmed. Now, allow me to quickly give you the general management of a neonatal sepsis baby, and this is where number one, we admit the baby, and two, we provide warmth and weigh the baby. Um, step number three is where we establish an IV line and begin fluids, resuscitation fluids. Um, and these fluids will depend, um, rather these fluids will be given according to the weight of the baby for the first 12 hours. So this means that 10% of glucose, for example, 10% of glucose at 2 meals, meals per kilogram stat IV. After, heavy, after having done that, now we move on to collect blood for investigation. This is where, this is the blood that we're taking for septic screen, and um, sensitivities, sensitivity tests. After that, we need to begin IV antibiotics. Now, I'll explain that um, in the next slide, but for now, let's understand that step five is to begin IV antibiotics. And then um, we need to monitor the child round the clock. Now, about the empiric antibiotics therapy, based on the data gathered in Zambia at UTH, Common pathogens in blood cultures are usually stuff aureus, coming up with 31%, followed by Klebs yellow pneumonia, while E. coli, Salmonella species, and Citrobacter contribute um, to a lesser percentage. And uh, Acinobacteria CA alone can contribute up to 6 to 9%. The rest of the 34.48% is by undefined enterococci. Now, therefore, it is logic. It is logic. It is logical to draw the following empirical um, neonatal sepsis treatment, assuming that most of the predominant Staphylococcus isolated are from late onset, and the early onset one is associated with gram-negative cocci and bacilli. Basically, the aim of empirical treatment is to cover the presumed predominant gram-negative bacilli in the early onset sepsis and the most common nasocomial pathogens such as Staphylococcus bacilli in late onset of neonatal sepsis. Now the first line of antibiotics for early onset are cefotaxim. First line of antibiotics for late onset of neonatal sepsis are cefotaxim or cloxacillin. Now for second line antibiotics you may want to use ciprobid unless culture di dictates otherwise. Ciprofloxacillin. Um, specific antimicrobial therapy is based on the results of septic screen. That is, that means that you select an appropriate antimicrobial agent based on the bacterial cultures and antimicrobial sensitivity patterns. Now, the duration of antibiotic therapy um, in the cases of blood culture confirmed bacteremia, septicemia, or pneumonia. It should be treated for at least 7 to 10 days depending on clinical response and the type of organism that was isolated. And uh, for meningitis, usually you need 14 to 21 days. But in peculiar cases like where you find gram positives, continue antimicrobial therapy two weeks after a negative um, repeat of lumbar puncture. And uh, continue the antibiotic therapy for three weeks for gram negative meningitis. Discontinue antimicrobial therapy in cases of negative bacterial cultures and no clinical deterioration of the patient. In this case, you have to go back to your drawing board and try to put a proper cause of the, sep of the neonatal sepsis. For supportive treatment and other modalities, remember your ABCs. Ensure airway, breathing and circulation is intact. 
Close monitoring of respiratory status, perfusion, and urine output should be instituted on every neonatal sepsis baby. So we've come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for um, your continued support for me on this channel. If you're new, kindly do subscribe. Leave me a comment, hit the thumbs button and uh, hit the bell button so that you stay notified whenever I upload a new tutorial in this series. Thank you.